Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing a duck check-in. We're looking at one of my decks here, Alesha Who Smiles at Death. This is one of the first like budget decks I made, oh, years ago now. Oh my, I'm getting so old. Anyway, so this is an ally kindred deck. Um, also, I do have my version and a budget version I'm going to cover here. Uh, Frog Hermit said I should keep doing the budget thing, so I'm going to make sure I always have a budget as well. So yeah, you can find both in the description. But as I said, this is a deck I made a few years back, and this is when I was yeah playing with a pod, and I wanted them to maybe like... I was kind of newer to Commander, and I was hoping that they'd want to do like a budget deck thing. And um, I got really excited about the idea, and I built the deck, and then... I asked them and they're like, yeah, not really. And I was like, oh, oh, oops, yeah. I got a little too carried away. So remember, talk to people before you build the deck is what I learned there. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do that. Her color identity is Mardu. If you've been watching this, you know I love some Mardu. I did a whole series of Mardu card draw. So I love me some Mardu. Um, <clears throat> I am trying to complete the color challenge between the deck text and deck check-in. So basically my Sunday shows, um, I do either a budget deck tech, a deep dive deck, or I do these deck check-ins. Um, I'm trying to do all of, actually I've covered almost all of them already. I do need the four color ones, and uh, I've colored all the dual color. I need, I think, what is it, two of the mono colored, and then, um, Anyway, you don't need to know every little thing, but yeah, this is one of the three colored, Mardu is one of the three colored ones I have left. Um, and yeah, Mardu. I really think Mardu is my favorite three color combination. I think it is extremely aggressive, but also like balanced. I think there are like, um, uh, Jund, Jund where it's like red, green, black is more aggressive, but to the point where it's almost a little bit unbalanced. I feel like this is a really nice balanced and aggressive, so yeah. So uh, the original deck price is 205.03. I think it's actually a little bit lower now, but anyway. The budget deck though is only 48.11. The budget deck I managed to make budget very, very easily. I thought it would be like a real hassle. It was not. I took out like I think four cards I took out and replaced with budget options were already knocked the price down like $90, I think. So yeah, it was super easy. I thought it was going to be a whole big process, but anyway. Thoughts on Alesha? So, this is an older design for a card and it shows. Right, this is definitely something where I look at and I say, um, yeah. These days you would, actually there's a new Alesha where you don't have to pay mana to get things out of your graveyard. It's based on her attack power. So there's literally one where it does not have the mana. Unfortunately it is not a Mardu, so I'm kind of like, eh. Maybe I should add that to this deck, but I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Well this does feel a bit more clunky than current commanders. Uh, she gets a lot done and isn't the primary target. Again, there's a lot of power in not having like a commander where everyone sees it and they're like kill on sight, right? The kill on sight commanders, people always want to build those, so it's like, yeah, you're not going to keep that on the battlefield though. So, mm. Alesha, I don't see, I think pe a lot of people are going to look at Alesha and be like, yeah, I'm not using my removal on that. My removal is too important. So, yeah, having kind of low priority um, commander is kind of nice really also this deck this is getting a little bit into the weeds but this deck is really built like to as a stand up or standalone deck like it doesn't need her as the commander she benefits the deck rather than the deck being built around her so yeah kind of two different ways you can build the decks I think the ones where the deck can stand on its own are generally actually like stronger overall. So yeah. Okay, and so getting the most out of her recursion is what this deck is all about. To that we will be employing allies who will keep getting bonuses activated by other uh, allies entering the battlefield. 
Again, whenever an ally enters the battlefield, it basically gives all the allies their entering effect. So yeah, they just stack entering effects, and also the number of allies. As that goes up, the effect gets stronger and stronger, or has like even duplicate effects. So yeah, some of them do not, like granting haste or something like that. If you grant haste 10 times, same thing as having haste once, right? But there's a lot of other effects, like you can steal cards from other people's graveyards and stuff like that. Just shenanigans. I love it. Ally is great. I wish there was more. Ally Kindred. Okay, weakness of Kindred decks in board in general is board wipes. Um, so this is doubly true for these because they often do count how many Kindred there are or how many allies there are on the battlefield when they're triggering their ability. For instance, Hegra Diabolus for a 4 and a black is a 3-2 and whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player lose life equal to the number of allies you control. Keeping your allies on the board is really, really important. It's something this deck is very, very good at as well. We've got lots of like ways to make everything indestructible to uh, prevent board wipes, even exile effects because we're going to have flicker. We've got all kinds of like flickering effects that we can use as well. So yeah, it's uh, I shouldn't say all kinds. I guess we have like a couple, but yeah, even in the uh, the like I don't I shouldn't call it upgraded. I don't want to call it downgraded. The budget the budget deck. Um, it has actually more flicker than my uh, main deck, so yeah. Yeah, eff effects that protect your creatures are more important while flickering is much better. Yeah, because again, when you flicker, you're going to trigger all of those ETBs, right? All of those entering effects are going off every time you flicker. Which with allies is just like, going to, again, Hagra Diabolist is a great example. Um, he'll, uh, He'll do a pile of damage if you can flicker him with some other allies. You don't need a whole lot of allies or even changelings or whatever before this becomes very, very deadly. Okay, so star cards. This commander needs to get her attack triggers in as consistently as possible to be effective. Evasion is an important part of, or sorry, an important aspect of this deck. Equally important, actually more important, I'd say, is your ability to protect your board and maintain allies you have as well. So, um, flickering to avoid opponent spells and making everything indestructible, we have so, so much. I actually didn't have time to add all of that in here. But yeah, we've got, um, what is it called? Um, the hammer you can unattach, Sunforger, right? Sunforger, it has all kinds of targets you can get to like just make your everything indestructible at a moment's notice. Like a drop of a hat, you're like, okay, my whole board's fine. Done. Don't care. Yeah. Oh. So evasion and protection. Key to the city, two for this artifact. You can tap it, discard a card. Up to one creature can be blocked. Maybe your commander, maybe not. I don't know. Whenever key to the city becomes untapped, you may pay two if you do draw a card. So yeah, whenever it becomes untapped, you can pay two and just draw a card. So this lets you discard to get things into your graveyard that you can pull out with, yeah, with uh, your with Alesha, and then you can later draw a card and make it unblockable. This is like the perfect uh, artifact for this deck. Um, it's one of those that kind of maybe isn't great in a lot of decks in this it just does every single thing you want it to do rune slack type okay this is actually pretty important this uh give, uh, creature gets plus one plus one and is every creature type basically it becomes a changeling so you can make your commander alesha into a changeling meaning she's also an ally so she counts for all of those like effects that set up are set off when allies and she also benefits from all the ally things so that can make a very big difference if you want to go the commander damage win con i think this is something you need you need to start getting like plus one plus one counters on her which they can do and double strike which again they can do so yeah 
she she'll get there pretty quickly actually with all of that i think she'd have four damage and then plus one plus one counter is already up to five so you still probably need like two hits to get it done and a couple plus one plus one counters but yeah anyway parting gust okay this is such an amazing one probably the most recent addition two white you can tap a or gift a tap fish, not tap a fish. Don't tap fish anyway. Because I'll target non-token creature. If the gift wasn't promised, return the creature to the battlefield under Sonus control with a plus one plus one. So you can use this to save your ally or your commander or just trigger your allies. I guess if you're saving an ally, you're gonna do that by accident anyway. But yeah super good and yeah if the gift is promised if you give them a tap fish it's just exile basically swords this actually took out swords to plowshares and put this in because like being able to set off all those those ally things at instant speed is going to be better than just having swords to plowshares you can use it for exile also rogue's passage once again being the four and tap it target creature can be blocked basically your evasion there and call shanker okay so this is a little of a roundabout way for evasion but okay two mardu so again a uh, red white black for a two two with haste i do like my haste this is not an ally this is a goblin berserker whenever ankle shanker attacks creatures you control gain first strike and death touch this is, I think is like the best combination. Maybe first or maybe trample death touch is better, but first strike death touch, like if you, they block, they die. Anything that they block with is out of the, basically getting removed. Unless they have like a whole bunch of indestructible creatures to throw in front. This is just going to be like mass removal. Um, it's evasion in the sense that it's like it punishes them for blocking. That's the evasion, and I love it. Key allies. Okay, we've actually got kind of two lists of this, but Alice uh, Paladin for three and a white. He's really good because she can recur only creatures that have attack power two or less. So this comes in with two attack power, and every ally that comes in gets plus one, plus one. So you're going to be able to give this all kinds of bonuses. We've got ways to, like, give evasion to give like uh i think there's trample there's definitely menace i think trample and even like you know double strike too so this is going to be able to like do a whole lot even though it looks not that impressive on its own edema cultist once again is a zero two so you can pull this out of your graveyard anytime you want uh two and a black you can tap it Put target creature a card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. If its mana cost is less than the number of allies you control. So you're just going to start stealing creatures directly out of their graveyard. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, Cabria Evangel? 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 I feel like I'm not saying it wrong. I always want to say Evangel, which is wrong, but anyway. Um... Two and a white for a two three. And whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may choose a color. If you do, allies you control gain protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. There's your evasion, right? They can't block. You can just choose to even make two allies and give protection from two colors. You can probably get through with all the view creatures then. Remember, as soon as they have protection from the color, even if the creature has if the other creatures have even one of those colors, they have protection from the creature, meaning they can't even block it. They can't even be assigned as blockers. They just get through. Oh boy. Sorry for my list of win cons. Mundu, Ambush Leader. Okay, so two red, white. The only kind of downside here is that, yeah, he has three attack power, which means you can't pull him out of the graveyard with Alesha. So there's the downside. But he has a 3-4 with haste. And whenever he or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may look at the top four cards of your library. If you do, reveal any number of ally cards from among them. Then put those cards on top of your library in any order, and the rest on the bottom. So this is just going to load up allies on top of your library. 
which is what you want to do because you want to just keep pulling allies and dropping them on the battlefield and setting off those the effects like start to add up very very quickly i think you can already see between these four how dangerous that gets i'll get the is a kind of off and one i feel like but anyway three and a black for a two 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 perfect when it when it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, target player reveals a number of cards from his or her hand equal to the number of allies you control. Choose one of them, that player discards the card. So this is all about like protecting yourself by attacking other people's options. Remember, if they don't have options, they can't hurt you. Okay. Offensive triggers. So Tuk Tuk Scrapper. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, removal, and they take damage equal to the number of allies you control. So you're destroying their artifact, and then as soon as that artifact hits the graveyard, they take damage equal to the number of allies you control. Removal plus player damage. Um, oh boy. Mursa Pyromancer. So this is a 3-2, another one that you can't pull out of the graveyard with a, a last shot, unfortunately, but yeah. When it enters, or it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage to target creature equal to the number of allies you control. This is going to just be creature removal. So we've got artifact removal, creature removal. Hagrid Diabolist, we've uh, talked about already. Both Tuk Tuk Scrapper and Hagrid Diabolist will be doing damage equal to the number of allies you control to directly to players. Player removal is good removal. Mm. Rana Liberator of Malakir. So one black, black or two three. Again, she is two actually. Flying first strike. Above me some first strike. Especially paired with like anything else. Anyway. She whenever she deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. Again, just give them like protection from a color and then swing with everything. You're gonna be open. I guess maybe not everything, but yeah. You can start getting those plus one plus one counters down, and it'll get out of hand. Hero of Gomafada. Okay, so whenever an ally enters the battlefield, everything gains indestructible. We've got Birthing Bows, which means as soon as you get that, you can just tap this for three mana and make a 2-2 two, two, um, Shapeshifter. And then, yeah, that counts as an ally, and then every your whole board, everything is just indestructible. You basically have board wipe counter built into you, like, whatever you want, whenever you want. Yeah, oh. Ooh, everything. Okay. Island Berserker is... Light enters. These are all ally enters. I'm going to stop saying that. Basically, first strike. This is going to give you uh, a haste. So we've got first strike, we've got haste, we've got um, menace. But here's our ev another evasion, menace. Double strike, first strike and double strike. I know they don't really stack, but two different sources. That's nice. And then ankle shanker again, which is going to be first strike touch. So we can potentially go like haste, double strike, death touch, and uh, menace. Whoa. So how the plan, how does this deck play? Step one is always the same, right? Ramp. Step two, in the grave. Getting things to your graveyard to be pulling out and or ways to get things out in and out of your graveyard is what I should say for that. Finally, win con. Yeah, one, two, three. So Skyclave Relic, this is something I always recommend. Some people really hate on it because they're like, oh, it isn't too meh. Yeah, if you pay the kicker, it makes three uh, indestructible artifact or sorry, uh, mana rocks that will be you can tap for any mana. Basically, it's three arcane signets that are indestructible. So if they want to remove it, they gotta like exile your tokens, like your artifact tokens. Yeah, really much better, I think. And it does cost two. It's six for three. So yeah, that's two. Anyway, um, enough of that. 
Jessica's will two in the red this is one that very obviously had to go from the budget but yeah choose one if you control a commander as you cast a spell choose both just an amazing spell add a red for each card in target opponent's hand mm. and exile the top three cards of your library you may play them this turn so easy to do and yeah it'll get you mana and everything you need Sword of the Animist. Okay, so this is all about attack. You're going to want to attack with your commander pretty much every turn anyway. You might as well get land. Every time you attack, you go get a land. Whatever basic land you want. Wayfarer's Bobble. Once again, this lets you sacrifice it and go get a basic land. Hey, great. Solemn Simulacrum. This is so amazing in this deck because Sad Boy. As, as he's called, is a 2-2. That means you can keep pulling him out of your graveyard and throwing him back in and he's going to get his ETB. So when he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. So this is just going to keep ramping you. As long as you can keep like throwing him at people and hopefully they keep either taking damage, which would be kind of funny, or they take block him and take him out and you pull him back. Uh, either way, it's, it's great. And when he dies, you draw a card. So yeah, even I wish we had some decent sack outlets. Kind of doesn't fit, is the unfortunately the thing here. In the grave, illicit shipment. This is casualty three. So yeah, you are going to have to like take something out. Hopefully something that has like plus counters on it. So that makes it bigger to get the casualty three. And then when it's in the graveyard becomes like a 2-2 two, two or a 1-1 one, one again and then you can pull it back out and hopefully get those counters back on but yeah this is a tutor a five mana tutor that gets two things a tutor that gets two things that's crazy and yeah it goes straight to your hand not but to like top library or anything once again key to the city we already talked about but it's all about getting things into your graveyard by discarding so yeah Buried Alive. Um, search your library for up to three creature cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle. So you can just go whatever three, you know, uh, two power uh, allies you want to go get, throw them straight into your graveyard, and you can start pulling them out and doing that cycling thing. Or even just a sad boy if you want to ramp. March of the Tomb. Alright, so this is five mana which sounds a little high for this sorcery but let's see what it does return any number of ally creatures with total converted mana cost eight or less to from your graveyard to the battlefield once again alesha can't pull things back out if they have power above three and we do have some things to power above three so we're going to want to have an option that lets us do that also if we've got allies in our graveyard and if we just pull them straight out of the graveyard and throw them into the battlefield that sets off like a whole chain of like entering effects that can potentially win you the game frankly yeah if you've got Hagrid D. Bolas, this might get the job done frankly Olgan's command Olgan's command Olagans. I think I'm saying it wrong Kolagans I never said that out loud before I'm realizing right now uh one black red Choose to return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Hey, great recursion. Target player discards a card. If you've got, you know, your discard engine going, it could be nice. A little combo. Destroy target artifact. Hey, sure, why not? Removal. And it deals two damage to any target. Two damage in the right time can be very, very useful. Once again, this is about having options. All of these modals are always about having options. For three mana, getting two effects, even removal with one of them is amazing. The win con number one, Hagrid Diabolus, who we talked about, another round, and Panharmonicon. You don't need Panharmonicon, it just makes it much easier. So another round, XX2 white, XL any number of creatures you control, then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Repeat this process X more times. Okay, so if you cast it for only 
two and a white, you could do that and do it only once. That would still do it once. Every two extra mana you put into it does it again. And again and again. So if you got Hagar D. Bolas and Panharmonicon, every time you he enters, he's going to trigger and everything else is going to trigger him. And Panharmonicon is going to double all of his. You don't need a whole lot of allies and a whole lot of triggers going off for that to just drain people out completely, right? Even by mid-game, this is probably going to, like, be a finisher. So, yeah. Win con number two. Bosmus Act and your temple is under attack. Basically, Bosmus Act I'm using for stand-in for any board wipe. But, yeah. Um, this is... Basically, you make your all of your creatures indestructible, and then you cast the board wipe. And then you just go smash. Okay, win con number three, Legion Loyalty. Creatures you control have Myriad. So you just give all of your creatures Myriad, and you attack with everything. And then when you ha they have Myriad, they make copies for each other opponent, attacking each other opponent. So you swing with everything, and then they're going to make copies of everything, and all of those copies are going to set off the entering effects and count towards the entering effects. So that's just can end the game very easily. Again, if you've got something like Tuk Tuk Scrapper, as long as they have artifacts you can keep smashing, or Hagrid D. Bolas, you can um, basically just win the game off that. Also, Angelic Captain. Whenever Angelic Captain attacks, it gets plus one, plus one till end of turn for each other attacking ally. So this is going to make three, or however many opponents you have, probably three, um, flying angel allies that are going to be at minimum what it would be seven sixes and that's if they're the like if you only have that one ally so yeah and it will probably be much much bigger right all right suggestions all right i'm going to look at ways to make this deck more budget basically undoing my costly upgrades the upgrades i mostly just did this ended up being really easy because like my upgrades i kind of like whenever i pulled something really fancy that um fit into the deck i just throw it in there so taking them back out was super easy as i said taking four cards out dropped the price by like 90 bucks already so I think I ended up only having to switch like seven cards or something to get to, down to like 50 bucks, which is where it originally started. My first version of this deck was under 50. Again, that was a few years back, but still, uh-huh. Basically what I just said, yeah, super easy to do. But the main thing is that I'm looking for budget options that synergize with the deck, right? that offer more synergy do kind of the same thing most of the time but more emphasis on synergy if you're looking for a budget you should always like look at what synergizes with your deck that's always like the best way to go and it'll probably save you quite a nice amount of money and be better replaceable cards okay so jessica's will as i already said kindred dominance this is like almost a I didn't include this on the list of win cons because, like, I'm gonna take it out. In a way, yeah, destroy everything that's not the creature type you choose. Yeah, pretty good with a kindred. This actually had gone way down in price and went back up. Anyway, deflecting SWAT. That from a commander deck, if you can't tell. Um, uh, sorry, deflecting SWAT, just changing the target of something. You can cast it for free if you have your commander. Teferi's Protection. I don't know if I even have to explain this one. Basically, you're just not in the game for one turn. You get to ignore everything. Oh, Teferi. Navi Triumph. I actually took, I think, three lands out of my, my deck to make the budget one. So, but yeah. This enters Battlefield tapped. It can tap for three, all three of our Mardu colors, and it has Cycling 3, which is nice. Jessica's Will. This is one I'm not really, I'm kind of changing what we do with it here. Um, 
Revivify. So we're going to have something where we can just bring all of our creatures back. This is almost a finisher. Uh, if they've gotten a couple, of, if they've actually managed to hit you with a couple of um, board wipes or get board wipes through, this is going to like basically win the game for you. So yeah. It doesn't really make mana, of course. It doesn't ramp you, but as far as card draw, it's pulling things out of your graveyard, so it's not really card draw, but it's similar. Kindred Dominance and switching with Split Up. The one white white, you can destroy all tap creatures or destroy all untapped creatures. So before you attack, just destroy everything that's tapped. Um, it'll, yeah. Not quite as good, obviously, but yeah. Or you attack with everything and then destroy everything. In the next main phase, destroy everything that's untapped. Reflecting Squat, uh, play, uh, replacing with Untimely Malfunction. This card is so good. This is Modal, which I love. Destroy target artifact, change target spell, uh, the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Spell or ability, and then one or two creatures can be blocked this turn. This just does everything you want in this deck. The synergy is crazy. It's not, you can't cast it for free. Other than that, this is just better. Fairy's Protection for Lazels, Acrobats, okay. So this costs one more mana. You can exile all creatures you control, then roll a d20. People don't like the roll thing. I think it's actually pretty good. Remember, a 10 to 20 is a 55% chance. 11 to 20 is 50%. 55 is. So 55% chance you can return creatures to the battlefield under your control, then exile them and return them to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. There's your downside is that you're going to be unprotected for like one combat basically. Or even if it's after the combat, you can cast this during your uh, during a second main and really not have anything to worry about at all. You can even use this as like just a flicker to like set off all of your stuff. Once again, not as good defensively, almost better offensively though. Teferi's protection won't, when all your stuff phases back in, that does not set off ETB. So in that sense, this is better. Divide Triome, Bloodstain Mire. Okay, we actually have one more uh, or, uh, land I took it that was like, what was it again? I remember it was an Orzhov. It cost like 10 bucks. Anyway. Mountain and Swamp. Okay. Uh oh. Here we go. My son is here. I am hoping he's getting a little fussy at this point. I think I've been recording for too long. Anyway, yeah. Our lands change. So that is pretty much it. So, yeah, what we've got for the budget deck is under 50 bucks, and it's not a huge dive in power. The allies are very budget friendly. So this deck is a lot of fun. I, again, it's the first deck I built from scratch. All the commanders may look a lot worse, which can be an advantage. Don't get confused, right? Remember, not having like the scariest looking commander at the table is a good thing. <sighs> he could stop pacing. Anyway, this deck, uh, this is a deck where it can function well without the commander. Decks that don't need the commander are really, really good, right? So this is far too unusual. Uh, this deck makes good use of the commander. The commander is very useful in the deck, but it's not instrumental, right? It's not like a Kasla deck where it, you're almost, if you don't have that convoke thing, you're not getting your value. It's not dependent on her, which is very, very nice. Anyway, take it easy.